Hello, welcome back. I'm Tanya from Tanya's Witchy Kitchen, and how are you doing today? I hope you're having a good day. So, we had a Christmas, my, my mom's Christmas, and afterwards I took my daughter home, and um, we always have this chit-chat at the end, you know, when I'm dropping her off. <laughs> it takes at least a half an hour to drop her off. But anyway, my youngest son was in the back seat, and we covered so many topics in this half hour. It was it was just crazy. But anyway, so he's asking me. He says, "So, mom, you were like 35 when you had me," and I'm like, "Well, thanks for doing the math here, but yeah, okay, mm-hmm." And he's like, "So he didn't say anything else." I don't think he did. I think it was on the way home. Then he's telling me how his friends were asking how old his mom was. And he's like, I think she's like 49 or something. And, um, yeah, we're not repeating this, people. But anyway, he's like, he's like, his friends are like, oh my gosh, you have an old mom. Oh my gosh, she's so old. And I'm like, I am not that old. Like, and then I said, of course I said, well, is he the oldest in his family? Well, no. Well, the one is the oldest, and the one is an only child. And I'm like, yeah, I remember those days, you know, when I was a young mom. You know? <laughs> I was just like, it's like, ah. I was like, you should have like, like been like, no, she ain't old, you know. My mom's not old. Like she can do cartwheels around you. <sighs> I feel in your age. Kid calls you old, old mom. Ugh. I don't know what to do with these kids. Half the time I question what they discuss because then he was telling me um, how they're telling him. So he's done with his weight class, his weight lifting class, and they're telling him that he should just eat a bunch of food. Just eat, 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 and put the weight on. And then he should turn that fat into muscle. And I looked at him and I said, oh, sweetheart, that is not how it works. <laughs> no. No. I said, you have to put the weight on. I said, you're like like his oldest brother. You know, you're wiry. <laughs> He's strong. Like, that kid is strong. But, I mean, he doesn't look it. He doesn't look it at all. So, you know. For my youngest one, I'm just like, no, you have to put the muscle on. You don't want to put fat on and then build muscle. Like, the things these kids think about, it's just crazy. It's like, is there a connection between learning cursive and common sense? Um, <laughs> I just say that because it seems like the common sense has gone downhill and the cursive um, handwriting has gone downhill, you know, I don't even know if my grandson will learn cursive, um, unless they, you know, uh, become a rebel teacher and teach it because it's not in the curriculum. My youngest son's teacher was like that. She's like, nope, we're gonna have a crash course in, in handwriting and cursive, you know, how do you sign your name if you don't write in cursive? You just put an X well, anybody nowadays can copy that X, you know? Oh, yeah, these kids. What do you do? I'm an old mom. <laughs> Just like, yeah, I remember when I was a young mom, you know? I mean, there's 16 years between my oldest and my youngest. So, I mean, come on. I, I you know? I got to go through all the phases, I guess. <laughs> but, hmm, yeah, yeah, I might have to have him, like, we should do a sleepover or go bowling or something, and I want to meet these other friends of yours. <laughs> little airhead. No, okay. <laughs> okay, today <clears throat> I'm bringing you back to show you the sweet orange chili bar, the original way it was supposed to be made before I decided to, uh, you know, fly off in the field and change it up right on the spot. Who does this? But anyway, this is the way it's supposed to look. This is the way it will look. And I love it. 
I love it. I was super excited. I was stoked. I was like, yes, I win. But, <laughs> but anyway, three things. Dream big. Be true to you. You are worth it. And a good mom is a good mom, no matter what age she is. Into the soap. Okay. So, weirdly enough, this recipe is different than the first recipe. Because I'm still doing my master batches and I'm still playing with soap um, ingredients and, you know, I'm having fun. This is probably the only thing in my life that I can be like, do what I want, when I want, how I want to do it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> okay, so this master batch had canola, castor, coconut, olive, rice, bran, shea, and tallow. So when I do my recipes, I look at the fatty acid profile to see what I'm getting for my palmitic and steric total and then my oleic total. Okay, it's just a thing I do. Colors, colors. That one, the first one was um, Love of Sunshine from Nurture Soap. And this one I think is just regular orange from Brambleberry. Yes, regular orange from Br Brambleberry. And the, wait, is that the orange? Okay, so it was orange. And then the pinkish red color is Voodoo. Voodoo from Mad Micah's. I am, I'm so lost, you guys. Um, one little thing, there was orange peel in the oils with the kale and clay. So it was orange peel also, and I was just letting it soak and, you know, soften up. I don't even know if that makes a difference, but it was in the oils, okay? This is activated charcoal with just a touch, just a little smidge of black oxide. Because for some reason... It just depends how my seat popping goes, you know. Um, it, sometimes I, I get great results and sometimes I don't because, you know, my oven is used for other things. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. So, yeah. So, oh, it's just I don't always put the black oxide in there, but for this um, concoction, what I was going for, you know, my, the color scheme... I wanted it to be black. I didn't want it to come out gray. I needed the black to pop. Whether it was seat popped or black oxide popped, it, it was going to pop. <laughs> now, as I'm mixing the colors, I was like, I mean, I analyzed this. I decided this. I, you know, went back and forth on this. And then I was like, oh my gosh, maybe I should have done neons. But you can help me decide later if I should do neons or not. Um... This was the color scheme. This is what I wanted. And then, you know, I'm second guessing myself, which I should never do. I shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that to yourself. Don't second guess yourself. Your instincts are always right. And that's what my voodoo doctor says. <laughs> anyway, this was a drop swirl. So if you saw me mixing just a little bit before this, it was to make sure that the soap was sticking to the spatula really well and to make sure that it was going to be thick enough, fluid enough, but thick enough to where I wasn't going to get a muddy color at the end, right? You know how you start and it's just fluid and then you get to the end and it's you're scraping it out of the bowl, you know. Yeah, I didn't want that. I wanted it thick. I wanted it fluid. I didn't want a muddy bottom to this where the colors just bleh together, you know. Okay. <laughs> ah, so much for forethought. Yeah. So much for planning this out. It was planned out. It was, I mean, I've had this scent for probably half a year, if not longer. And I've been just dilly-dallying and debating and how was I going to do it. And then, of course, you know, like I said, and then I changed it up. I totally didn't even do what I was supposed to do, what I planned to do. But it was because I just wanted to do the gradient. I have an awesome one planned. I gotta remember to do that one. <laughs> You're just like, what? Yeah. So just a drop swirl. Hold it above. I should probably hold it above a little bit higher. But it, it actually is, you know, above. And then just let it break the plane of that soap. That's the whole point of a drop swirl. To break the plane of the soap. So that the colors are all like on top of each other and all pretty and, you know. 
makes you wonder who started coloring soaps. I know scenting soaps was a thing, you know, if you were rich way back, you know, well, (laughs) historical romances I read, they always seem to have like rose scented soap. I don't know what, you know, did they use hydrosol or, I mean, I don't know. How'd you get, I, I don't know. And for the top, I just did that little flame flick thing. I, like I said, I'm kind of liking that. Um, but the one thing is, you can't play with it too much. You can't keep going. I have found this out. You can't keep going over it over and over because it does get sloppy and messy and it's no fun. So this got saran wrap put over the top of it. It got wrapped into a towel like a baby and it got put in the oven for sea popping and jellying and it was still warm when I pulled it out. Kid you not. So here's the top. Pretty, pretty cool. And the colors, I like the colors. I don't think I'm going to do neons. There's my orange peel in there. I'm not going to do neons. I, I like this color. I, I really do. I like the color scheme. And you're going to be shocked when you see the inside. I was just ecstatic. Um, look at that. Look at that. They're so pretty. They're just so pretty. Yeah. Okay. I'll show you a close-up. I play with them. But, you know, as for the mama thing, um, there are things as a young mom that I wish I had done differently. Um, that I had been maybe more demanding and more outgoing. Not outgoing. Just more, more, nope. Nope, I'm not going to tolerate this. You know, nope, this is not acceptable. Um, Now, you know, when I go to teachers' conferences, I tell them how it is. You know, it's like, I'm sorry, you're doing, you're not doing, you're doing me a service, yes. But um, as a friend once told me, I have other tools in the toolbox to educate my child. You know, if he does something wrong, he does something wrong. But I just, there are times that I wish I was more demanding and I stood up for my kids a little bit more. I don't think I've let them down too badly in most cases, but you know, you never know. You have that mom regret and it sucks, but those are so pretty, you guys. I just, I can't get over it. They're just so pretty. I love it. I love it. Like, look at those swirls. Look at those drop swirls. They're dang near perfect. They're just big and gloopy and gloppy and like, look at that. And I actually thought about taking a hanger swirl to it. And I was like, no, you're not. You're not going to do this. This this went really well. <laughs> Had to, like, console myself. These are the fragrance notes to this bad boy. And here's the bar when it is just caught. And it doesn't change too much. Here's the bar when it's just cured. But I hope you had a good time. Thank you for dropping by. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.